I have a bad habit of spending money on things I don't need. And 3D printers are at nearly the top of the list of bad investments I've made. Well, today I maybe just made one more, but I did it for you. I have a YouTube channel now, so that justifies all of my frivolous spending. At least that's what I tell my wife. But today what I did is I backed the Kikoni Soda upside down seven color 3D printer. So why do we care that this printer is upside down? So besides being novel and different and kind of cool, supposedly there are some benefits. The bridging performance of this printer as claimed by Kikoni is superior to a traditional right side up printer because you have the force of the nozzle supporting the extrusion as it is being laid down. Personally, I don't think it looks any better than I have seen any other bridging test on a traditional FDM 3D printer. 3D printers can bridge phenomenally well, especially if the cooling is adequate. The other element of upside down 3D printing that is kind of interesting is that you no longer have gravity to help you. So while gravity can hurt you, it can also help you. So in the scenario of the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, we use gravity in the process of material changing. So the so-called poop shoot that's where our little balls of discarded waste drop down under the force of gravity and are ejected out of the back of the printer. So on this printer, we're now fighting gravity and we need to deposit our transition material when switching from one color to the next on a transition tower. And with the size of this printer being so small at 200 by 200, there really isn't much real estate for that transition tower. 10 times faster than the competition. Who is the competition? Well, in 2023, it's Bamboo Lab. And they're claiming superiority in a lot of ways. So they're claiming that they're quieter. A Bamboo Lab printer and the Kikoni soda side by side, and they show that the Kikoni is considerably quieter. So they're really going for the jugular here and comparing to the printer that every other printer is being compared to these days. And they are claiming that they come out on top. I think that is a lofty claim, considering how many other companies are playing catch up trying to get to the level of bamboo and still falling short with plenty of resources. So who is Kikoni anyways? In my research, it seems like it is a small company and the CEO of this company is only 23 years old. And prior to this Kickstarter, they have actually had one successful Kickstarter campaign. So they have another 3D printer called the Kikoni EC1. And this is targeted at an audience that really doesn't know anything about 3D printing. And now they're coming to the market with a professional printer, but it still has that element of ease of use. And I decided to put my money on the line and back it on Kickstarter. Now, of course, Kickstarter is not guaranteed. It's never guaranteed. So for your benefit, I am lighting my money on fire. $799 US that is being lit. And that is the super early bird price on Kickstarter. And that's for the dual module printer and filament storage solution, which houses seven spools. And together they make that multi-material 3D printing ecosystem. So one thing that Bamboo did really well in their Kickstarter is they shipped almost immediately. It was 99% of the way there. They just needed your money to get these on boats, get them on planes and get them to your door. With Kikoni, I think we will probably see more R&D needing to be done with our money in order to bring it across the finish line. Maybe Kikoni is exactly the type of company that should be running a Kickstarter campaign. We've come to expect companies like Creality and Elegoo and Revelpoint to have Kickstarters for their next products. And that's fine, that's a marketing tactic. As a consumer, I love saving money, so I will take advantage of that, especially when a reputable company has a new product that I'm interested in and I can get at a steep discount. Kikoni is the type of company that should be on Kickstarter. They're small and they clearly need the investment. Where I think they've gone a little bit astray is in making their marketing confusing to the point of thinking that they are more established than they are. But then getting a glimpse behind the scenes and seeing that they are very early in the stages of development and they are not the big company that they make themselves out to be. So as a consumer, you put a lot of faith in them when you see that cinematic quality production video. But you really need to be aware of the true nature of this type of company and what their capabilities are and how likely it is for them to deliver on their promises. So they've invested a lot of time on the marketing side of things 
and they've built an app and they've added all of this functionality that you know is totally not relevant whatsoever. An app that does AI modeling. And maybe if you're a beginner, you care about that kind of thing. But as an expert or a power user, you're going to see right through that. Based on the video that they've shown, I think it's very far-fetched that it could do anything close to what they've illustrated. Only time will tell whether Kikoni is one of the few that can run a successful Kickstarter campaign and fulfill in a timely manner. So a few other things that do look interesting about this printer. It has a transparent build plate and there is a camera on board for print monitoring. So we will be able to use that camera to look through the build plate at our first layer. That is pretty cool and is not something we've seen anywhere else. We also have closed loop steppers, which is not something we typically see on a 3D printer. So if you have a layer shift, we could actually come back from that because we know our position is not what it should be based on that feedback loop in the motion control system. Another similarity between this Kakoni Soda and the Bamboo Lab printers, on the Kickstarter campaign, you have the option of backing the Kakoni Soda and the Kakoni Soda Lite. And the light version looks like a stripped down version of the soda. So essentially we have the P1P to the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. So when you're buying a 3D printer, you probably look to trusted reviewers to give their opinion on it before you put your hard-earned money on the line. For the Kikoni Soda, we have a single solitary review. And it is by a gentleman named Michael Ellsgood. Hey, what's up, Michael here. So 3D printing has been around for a minute now, but it's something I've never personally gotten into. But whenever I've played around with these machines, I just don't really know what I'm doing. So it's something he's never really gotten into, but he is the one guy that we have to listen to to determine whether or not this is a good machine to buy. Now, what I will say is that he's coming at it from an angle of a beginner and somebody who's not familiar with the technology. And I think that is really how they are targeting this machine. You'll see that the unit they sent him is, well, just have a look. Out of the box, it takes under two minutes to set up. Plug it into the port and it will power up. It also auto calibrates. You don't have to do anything yourself. Even the PLA filament is already preloaded inside. Even the box looks bad. This should not be the only review that is live right now. When you're launching a Kickstarter, you really do need to send this to some trusted reviewers and get some good quality videos with a final production unit or at least close to it and not this really, really rough prototype. All right, so let's have a look at the Benchy print. This looks to be the same scratched up prototype that they sent that one reviewer. Okay, so we have our 20 minute Benchy. Timer is paused. We are 20 minutes and 54 seconds. Then we come and grab the Benchy off the build plate and we hold it as far away from the camera as humanly possible so we cannot see all of the flaws. So that is a huge red flag to me, indicating that the print quality may not be where it needs to be. So my advice to Kikoni would be to drop the gimmick of the app. 3D scanning is its own realm of technologies and we do not need a companion app that has all of that functionality. Give us a really good printer, focus on the hardware, and focus on the software that is integral to that process. There are other options for 3D scanning, for photogrammetry, and for turning objects into models. You don't need to pollute your advertisement with that narrative when it doesn't strengthen the overall value proposition, at least in my opinion. So stay tuned while this story evolves and as I await the arrival of this printer, let me know in the comments down below, do you think this is worth putting your money on the line for, or would you rather set it on fire? So thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.